Hey guys, Reed with Work Turbo, another episode of Turbo Tech Thursday here for you today. Um, I wanted to discuss shaft motion in a journal bearing turbo, specifically the Borg Warner S300 SX and SXE series turbocharger. Um, had a customer call me, he said, Reed, I've got a turbo um, and it feels like the bearings are loose in it. How do I know if this is good, bad, or is there any way to really tell? The answer uh, is both yes and no, um, but we're going to go over the easiest way to tell if the turbo should be good. First off, you have to understand that this is a hydrodynamic bearing system in the S300, um, meaning the bearing floats on oil. So this is a brand new turbo. We just did some coatings on it for the customer, but I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera or not, but it's got some shaft motion in the radial direction. This is completely normal because oil pressure uh, has to has to have a place to push the oil into. So you've got clearance between your bearing and your bearing housing and your shaft and your bearing. Um, that clearance, uh, when there's no oil pressure, is going to create shaft play. Um, thrust motion or axial motion, that's in and out. I'm pulling up on the wheel, pushing down, or grabbing a hold of it. That is three and a half thousandths uh, on average for an S300. So if you're looking at a turbo that's used, you want to grab a hold of the shaft nut, pull it towards you and push it away from you. You should barely feel anything at all uh, if the turbo has oil in it. If it's been sitting dry, you know, hasn't been run for a while, um, you may get a little noise, but three and a half thousandths is just enough that you can feel. If it has more than that, the turbo is going to need servicing. So if you can physically see it move in and out, that's a pretty good sign that the turbo has got some trauma to it. All right, we're going to take uh, the radial motion because that's what everybody seems to be concerned with. They get brand new ones, they bought one, they've had it rebuilt, and they say, read the, the, the shaft moves around. How much is acceptable? So we're going to take this brand new turbo, pull it out of the housing, and I'm going to show you a fairly straightforward way to measure it. So as y'all guys know, the compressor wheel has an inducer and an exducer, or a minor and a major, and there's a radius cut into the wheel that meets the radius of the housing. Um, brand new, that radius is going to be between, uh, or the clearance between that radius and the, of the housing and the radius of the wheel, is going to be anywhere from about 15 and a half thousandths to uh, roughly just under 20 thousandths, about 19 thousandths. I always say everybody, is on an average, you're going to look for about 18 thousandths clearance between the wheel and the housing when you push the wheel all the way over against, you know, the, the bearing. So basically you take up the slack in the bearing. Well, how do you measure this? Uh, <laughs> this is going to be the simplest thing you're ever going to see. Go grab you some Scotch brown masking tape. This just so happens to be quarter inch wide. If you only have wider, go ahead and tear it into some, or cut it into some quarter inch wide strips. The reason why we want to use this, you're gonna, you know, not want to use, you don't want to use blue painter's tape or the green tape or any of that fancy stuff. Just the regular old plain brown tape. If you grab your calipers and you measure the nominal thickness of it, I don't know if you can see that very well, it's basically five and a half thousandths. So if we take this piece of tape, obviously you want to make sure everything's clean on the housing, no oil, no dirt. Um, while you got it off, obviously look to see if the compressor wheel is rubbed, the housing, if there's any touchdown marks, scuff marks in it. If you see that, you don't have to go to this step here. Unless the turbo was rebuilt and you think maybe they just didn't clean the housing back up. Uh, but take the tape, roll it in through the radius. So you want to uh, basically just run your clean pass from inlet to outlet of the uh, radius. Make sure there's no bumps, bubbles, trash, anything underneath it. Put one piece of tape down. Slide housing back together, push and pull and spin. You should get zero rubbing on that tape between the wheel and that uh, and that clearance we just took up. So that's five and a half thousandths, no touching off anywhere. Take your second piece of tape, do the same exact thing. Put 
Make sure your fingers don't have oil on them like mine do. <laughs> Spin it. On S300s and S400s, uh, two pieces of tape, you should get zero contact. Uh, that's going to roughly be 11 thousandths of an inch. So contact at that point would be a bad thing, um, showing you that there is some wear to the bearing or the bearing machine work is not correct if it's been rebuilt. So we've got two pieces of tape, no contact. Three pieces of tape, you should get a little rubbing right out at the tip of the compressor wheel. So all the way out by the shaft nut because this is furthest away from the pivot point of the bearing. This side of the wheel is going to move more than it does over here ever so slightly. So you should just get a little contact on the outer tip. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I got a little rubbing and I'm pushing and pulling pretty good on the, on the bearing structure to make sure I'm taking all the oil out of the equation and just pushing it right up against the bearing. And it's probably hard to see in the camera, but uh, just past the ported shroud slot, I've got a little witness mark where the wheel is rubbed off right there on the tape. Um, with the new turbo, we, we check clearances this way uh, just as a really quick go or no go um, to see if the turbo has got the correct clearances in the, in the unit. Um, is this a foolproof way of knowing if the turbo is good inside. No, it's not, but it's a good indicator. Uh, if you were to have gotten, uh, when you put the third piece of tape on there, you would have spun the wheel and it obviously would have tried to just rip the tape out of the housing. Um, then, you know, the turbo could be okay. It could be not okay, depending on how thick the tape is. Uh, you know, this tape that I buy uh, comes from a master car. It's just you know, been the standard I've used for years and I know it's five and a half thousandths thick. So basically we have um, just under, you know, that 17 thousandths clearance uh, between the wheel and the housing at this point. And uh, that's acceptable in, in my standards for building these guys. So very simple, easy way to tell if you may have too much bearing clearance. Um, you can do the same on the exhaust side. Uh, exhaust sides are tricky because the turbine housings, if they're used, they're, they're cast iron. They're going to have some rust. They're going to have some soot, stuff like that. So you might want to clean them first and uh, before checking it on the exhaust side. But you can also do the same exact test. The clearance is the same on the turbine side as it is the compressor. Some, some turbos will have a little bit more on the exhaust side. Um, so if it gets to four pieces of tape and, and then starts touching off, uh, you know, all hope is not lost. You're probably okay. All right, little little extra tech tip for your S300, S200 guys. Um, you've probably seen in my comments on Instagram that uh, we O-ring seal a lot of our S400 compressor covers these days. Um, been looking at a way to do the S300, but there's just no real room in this housing to machine for an O-ring or, or fit something. I'm working on it, but it's not necessarily been the easiest task to do reliably. Guys, if you want to make sure you have a air leak free assembly, go find you some Loctite 518 or Permatex makes a version of it. It's flange sealant. Um, this stuff is, uh, is gold. Do not use silicone. Uh, you know, you want to use some type of anaerobic, uh, thin set flange sealant. Uh, this stuff is readily available at Napa. Uh, I've even seen it at Advance, O'Reilly's, Pep Boys. Um, they do make it in smaller tubes. Uh, take it, put just a little sixteenth of an inch bead on the clean surface of the compressor cover right where the bearing housing registers. Stick the bearing housing back down in there, rotate it, seat it. You can also put a little bit on the threads because these are open into the volume. And that's a good simple way to get rid of some potential boost leak problems uh, out of the uh, S200, S300 series turbos. Um, if your turbo's been on your car for a while, it's probably sealed itself up. The way these things work is this is cast iron, this is aluminum. Just the normal moisture content will eventually create an oxide layer between the mating surfaces and it will seal. But I know a lot of you race guys, you don't you don't have hundreds and hundreds of miles on these things daily, you know, uh, like a over the road truck gets. So, you know, a sealant uh, is definitely preferred, especially if you've had the car apart, need to go race this weekend, you don't want any boost leaks. This stuff is your is your ticket. Guys, I hope you took something away from this video. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet this time. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you want to hear about next, but this is uh, just a simple way of telling uh, on your S300, 
even S200, some Garrett turbos, you know, uh, any, as long as journal bearing, S400, roughly that three piece of tape rule applies to all of those guys. Um, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you hopefully next Thursday. Y'all have a good day.